Welcome back, True Seeker. There was one point I forgot to make in the last video addressing the Flat Earth community, and this person right here, the greatest, has commented, writing, if the Earth is flat, then it's a creator behind it. A lot of the Flat Earthers say this, the Flat Earth proves God. And that just makes me wonder where these people are coming from. Why couldn't God create a spherical Earth? Why couldn't God create an Earth that circles the sun, which is the Earth God has created and the Earth we live on? I, I don't understand where your argument comes from that God's Earth has to be this flat, simple plane. Enlighten me. Why couldn't God create a spherical earth? Why is a spherical earth so insulting of God? Again, in the Bible, it does not say anywhere that the earth is flat. That is not expressed in the Bible. There's a number of Christians who've even built websites because this has become an argument. There's so many Christians that are saying, look, all these people that are saying the Bible says the earth is flat, it almost seems like these people are trying to discredit the Bible and make the Bible look silly. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the earth is flat. And even if it did, the Bible is not the definitive word of God. In the Bible, it says it's okay to beat your slaves. It says you can't kill them, but you can knock out their tooth and blacken their eye. You think God wrote that? That you can beat your slaves? God also says to pay your taxes. Do you think God cares about if you pay your taxes? Do you think God wants the American people paying taxes to the military machine that we live in? The Bible, as we know it, was written by man to control man. And even still, nowhere in it does it say that the earth is flat. This person also says that the Illuminati card game says the earth is flat. And I've seen people leave this comment before. You know, the things that are in the Illuminati card game are the false flags that unfold against us. What fits into that is the flat earth psychological operation, which is meant to target the truth community. You know, <laughs> if you want to go to the Illuminati card game and say, because there's a card in there that says flat earth, that is a really bad argument. And a lot of you make it. The more flat earthers speak, if you have a brain, the more obvious it is of how unwell thought out they are. And other people are commenting that it's atmospheric refraction that causes from distance, you know, buildings to look lower in the skyline than up close. That's a nonsensical argument too, because that's something that can happen and atmospheric refraction can make an object look higher or lower, not always lower. And all of them know that. The fact of the matter is, it's a rule that when you go further away, all city skylines shrink. They always shrink. They never go up. And the reason that's so is because of the curvature of the earth. There's no exception to this. It's a provable fact. So don't tell me it's atmospheric refraction that's causing it to look like there's curvature to the earth. That is bullshit. Read what atmospheric refraction is. It can cause a mirage that make an object look higher or lower in the sky than it actually is. Never, you know, do you see a city skyline rise up as you go further away. It always goes down. So that is a dishonest argument. And for any of you who've been sucked into that lie, it's time to pull your head out of your ass. I just pulled your head out of your ass for you. Now wipe the shit out of your eyes. Atmospheric refraction, look it up, causes a mirage that makes an object higher or lower. And it has to be special conditions to cause that. It, does, it isn't just always there. So you can't use that as your excuse to say that, oh, there's not really just curvature. That's an illusion created by atmospheric refraction. Because it doesn't matter where you go on this earth, what weather conditions are in place. It could be 110 degrees outside, it could be 30 below zero, it doesn't matter where you go. When you go to a certain distance away, such as 30 miles, and you're looking at a skyline, a city skyline, everything's going to sit lower every single time. Atmospheric refraction or not. That's what science is. That's what consistency is. What flat earthers do 
as they try to nitpick and they try to take these, you know, obscure examples to prove their point. You know, atmospheric refraction also doesn't explain why when you're in the northern hemisphere, you're looking at a different set of stars than when you're in the southern hemisphere, okay? And I put out a lot of videos since 2015 exposing all of the fallacies of flat earth. I don't want to continue to go into it because all of you just continue to argue the same tired shit. I'm just explaining, you know, for those of you who do actually want to pull your head out of your ass, why flat earth is bullshit. And all your arguments don't make sense. God could cr only create a flat earth. That doesn't make any sense. You know, it's obvious that God's real. People who choose to say that God isn't real, that's another form of ignorance. There's all sorts of proof that God is real. Look at us. You know, where do we come from? You know, I don't know if God was the perfect creator, you know, if he spent a little more time on us, I don't think there'd be any flat earthers. But it's obvious that God is real. You know? Gotta be blind not to see evidence of God. And I want to sit here and argue about God's existence. You know, if you're awake, if you pay attention to the things that happen in this world, it's obvious that God is a real presence. You know? You know? So... I mean, just flat earthers. They just make the silliest arguments. And always you guys go to NASA. You, you consider NASA's bullshit to be proof that the earth is flat. I was exposing NASA well before the flat earth psyop started. You know, my work actually exposes NASA. Flat earth, it doesn't really expose anything about NASA. Flat earth just makes you look dumb. Look into my work and what I've exposed about NASA. My book will be out soon. There's a chapter on NASA and the Twilight Zone, which are two things that go hand in hand. The pilot episode of the Twilight Zone came out in 58, the same year NASA was established, and the pilot episode is about putting a man on the moon. And there's a whole lot more to that. Everything about NASA is done by the code that I expose. You know, my work is real truth. My work is real knowledge that empowers people. Flat Earth does not empower you. If you feel empowered from learning that the earth is flat, what you've done is you've deceived yourself. And now you're making yourself dumb. You're choosing to be dumb. Huge difference. My work, real knowledge that empowers and can put you further ahead. You know, that's how I call out false flags and rig sports championships and all the other things that I do well before they happen. Flat earth can't do jack shit for you besides make you look really fucking dumb. Okay? That's it. Have you making bogus arguments? Atmospheric refractions, the reason, you know, that it looks like curvature. Bullshit. Bullshit. That's what the flat earth theory is. It's a bunch of bullshit. So anyway, the greatest, <laughs> you know, you, you got to work on some things before you call yourself the greatest, man. Including your grammar. All right, truth seekers, until next time. Encore, one last thing to address. Flat earthers often leave these comments to me that, well, Zach, I'm not as much of an idiot as you to think I'm on a spinning ball moving a thousand miles per hour. And every time I get that comment, I think, man, all flat earthers lack perspective. The earth has a circumference, meaning, you know, one trip around it, is nearly 25,000 miles. And in a single day, the Earth makes one full rotation around that circumference. So approximately 1,000 miles per hour. There's these YouTube videos from Flat Earthers that have a spinning ball on a mechanism, and it's flying around, and then they're pouring water onto the ball, and then they're showing how the water flings off the ball. Look, if you have a brain, you should be going, well, how is that experiment anything like what's going on with Earth? Is Earth just flying around in circles just, you know, a thousand times a day? No, that's not going on. So if you were going to pour water onto a ball that was supposed to be mimicking Earth, it would have to be rotating at the speed of one full rotation a day. And if it was moving that fast, then the water wouldn't be shooting off everywhere 
which is the effect you guys are seeing, and then passing along that video and saying, see, look at how stupid the spherical Earth theory is. Understand, that ball that's on the machine that's flying around, it's also not in orbit of the sun, which isn't creating the force that pulls everything towards the center of that object. And the word we've been given for that is gravity. Okay? It doesn't matter what the word is. The point is that force is created from the orbit and that force pulls everything towards the center of the earth. That's why when we jump up, we don't float off. You know? That's why everything goes towards our feet. Doesn't matter if we're in the southern hemisphere or in the northern hemisphere. Everything's going towards the center. It's all about perspective, you know, and, and I don't see it in the flat earth community because you guys are passing along these videos. You have to understand I've been here and people have been sharing thousands of flat earth videos with me saying, watch this, Zach, watch this, Zach, watch this, Zach. And then I turn on these videos and I think, oh, my God, these people are falling for this. A ball on a machine that's flying around and somebody's pouring water on it and the water's flinging off. And then down in the comments, you realize, you're like, yeah, how idiotic do you have to be to think the ball's on earth? Here's proof. And you're just thinking, what? I mean, you guys, one rotation a day. You're making it seem like the earth's the Harlem Globetrotter and he's here spinning the ball. And he's just like flying around. Imagine if the Harlem Globetrotter spun the ball at a rate that the ball rotated one full time over the course of 24 hours. You know? Water's not going to be flying everywhere. So, flat earthers, you just got to use your head. I mean, all of you who are getting sucked into this, you're being sucked in by people who are really trying to lie to you and lead you astray. You know? A lot of people in the truth community have purposefully given you some truth while trying to lead you astray. And a lot of flat earthers attack NASA, which has every right to be attacked, and then say that's the reason for the flat earth. And, you know, let, let me just make a point here. I want to show you something about old Bill Cooper and the difference between what I teach and flat earth. A lot of people think Bill Cooper is the greatest truther there ever was. And what I'm here to tell you is Bill Cooper, no doubt, was another agent. Bill Cooper taught about Nibiru, which is bullshit. You know, Nibiru is not a planet. He taught about UFOs, which is another psyop all done by the code. But look at this. I just want you to see where Bill Cooper died on November 6th. He was shot November 6th, 2001 in Eager, Arizona. Now, understand, when you're in the gang, everything about your life is done by the code, from birth to death. And I don't know if Bill Cooper really died on this date. I suspect he didn't. I suspect this was the end, his retirement, of his true thing at age 58. Remember, Freemasonry equals 58, Secret Society 58, big number coded on the Twin Towers, which equal 58, a whole lot of 58 on 9-11, and Bill Cooper did predict 9-11 and said it would be blamed on a boogeyman such as Osama bin Laden. But then again, so did Alex Jones, who's a major shill agent. But look at this. I just want you to see this about where Bill Cooper died on November 6th. And then I want to show you something about that date as well. Look at this. Eager, Arizona is where he was supposedly shot to death. Look at what it equals in ordinal gematria. These are your two most important ciphers. Full reduction, 62 like Mason. English or no, 116, just like the date he was shot, November 6th, and flip that upside down, 911, right? Killed right after 9 11, supposedly. Now look at this. The name Bill Cooper equals 55. 55. Also 107, just like shooting. Shooting has the gematria of 107. He went out in a shooting. But this 55, why does that matter? Look at what November 6th is. It's the day that leaves 55 days left in the year, which is the perfect day for him to go out by the code on. You know, this is how his truth shilling career ended, which was full of a lot of truth, but also a lot of disinformation. Nibiru, UFOs, 
you know, aliens. And Bill Cooper, to his credit, did speak against Zionism, but he said Zionism really doesn't have anything to do with Judaism. Now, that's bullshit, too. He said that, you know, most Jews aren't Zionists. Well, most Jews at this day and age are going by the Talmud. And the Talmud says, you know, that they're the chosen people and everyone else is part of a slave race. So Bill Cooper, while exposing Zionism, was also protecting the people who largely are the Zionists. He did point out that it was people who aren't Jewish who are part of the Zionist movement, and that's absolutely true. But why did he go to such lengths to always defend Judaism and the Talmud thumpers when he spoke about Zionism? See, these are all the signs to me that Bill Cooper was an agent. And I'm just letting you know, the truth community has always been full of shields. And I saw this, and that's why I got into the truth community. I said, you know what? Somebody really needs to do this right. I don't see the person doing it right. I see all these liars and fear mongers and half-truthers. I figured out some real knowledge that's empowering. And that's why I entered into the scene. And that's why I've dedicated so much time in the time I have been here. And in the time I've been here, nothing's been more detrimental to the truth community than the Flat Earth PSYOP, which began the summer of 2015. And by the way, that was the summer that the Illuminati card game turned 33 years old, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that came out in 82, that game. So, and let's not forget, I mean, the gematria of flat earth theory. Do I need to remind you? It's got the big Masonic and synagogue of Satan numbers. Flat, whoops, got to spell flat right. Flat earth theory. 74, 2, 2, 3. Masonic 74. Remember the 79223. Masonic 74. The synagogue of Satan. 223. 79. Those were just on flat earth theory, you know. Remember the Gematria of Washington Irving? The historian that lied about the truth of this world? You know, he made it seem like everybody thought the Earth was flat until Christopher Columbus, the long nose, sailed over here, which is just straight-up bullshit. You know, mathematicians going back to Egypt knew that the Earth was a sphere because all of this can be proven mathematically. And that's another thing flat earthers aren't strong in. They're not strong in mathematics. That's why so many of you have been taken by these shield theories that the sun is 30 miles away. How many of you were repeating that a year ago? Zach, the sun's just 30 miles away. Can you imagine if the sun was just 30 miles away in light of how big the earth is? Just imagine how the light pattern would be, you know? It's just, it's just such a nonsensical thought. I mean, draw, draw, you know, draw something to scale. Draw the earth to scale and then make the sun 30 miles away and see what that looks like. It's just insanity. It's insanity. All right, spent way too much time on the flat earth theory, but again, nothing drives me more nuts than all of you who get taken by this. My point in doing this is that I can pull you guys out of this trap that you've been sucked into. Your little mice that are going for the cheddar on the trap. You know, you don't want to be one of those mice. Until next time.